Hello, everyone. Welcome to Red Rock Ballpark. That's the home of the Feta Flamers. It's the Asiago Airplanes versus the Flamers today. Game number 11 here in the Winter League Challenge. Today, the Aeroplanes have Talia Mitchell on the mound and the Flamers have Chase Bayloos. We'll see here on the hill. There's Trey Mattingly leading it off for the Aeroplanes. It hits one. Ball's carrying here at Red Rock. And there's out number one now. I do believe Red Rock can transition into an indoor park. They have like retractable dome, retractable walls. But playing here, day game in the desert. And here's Sherry Drew steps in, looks at a ball. Strike, I apologize. And that's three and one now. And there's a strike. And that one has hit a ton. And is way out of here. Holy cow, Sherry Drew. That ball was tanked, 479-foot shot. Her first homer, fourth RBI of the tournament. And the Aeroplanes take the 1-0 lead. 479 foot. And that's a base hit up the middle. Look at that, so Ash McIntyre. And I make a note. And here's Miguel Russell. So right now, these Aeroplanes hitters are just jumping on Avalos. Russell batting 250 so far in the tournament. And Avalos looking tense as that one's fouled away. And fouled again into the dugout. That's up. That's ball high. And struck him out. Good pitching there by Avalos to work back. And now Sher uh, Sher <laughs> Jared Bugby steps in. Hitting 571, two homers, seven RBI so far in this tournament. Looking quite locked in. And hits that one quite well, but Cray Cray is there. Put away from the final out. The Aeroplanes get one on that big homer. They lead it 1-0 here. We go to the bottom of the first, and Alfredo West leads it off for the home team Flamers. And popped up. Looks like Patrick has room and beside Tapia, he's hitting the cover off the ball. 625, two homers, four RBIs. Hit a couple of big home runs so far in this series against the Aeroplanes and the Flamers. That one's fell back. Gets under that one and skies it to shallow left field. Mattingly is there for out number two. Here's Rose Bobber, 500, three RBIs. Right fielder for the Feta Flamers. And hits that one, but right at Fry. And that's out number three, so a quick inning. Bottom half of the inning there. Six, seven, and eight due up here for the aeroplanes, top of the second. No Brown leads on. Right Let's take a look here at Avalos. Four seamer slider, curve, change, also throws that fork ball. I see a lot of that. A little big challenge. Yeah. Yeah, that way. Out the no fork ball and screw ball. No the telltale Number signs that you're playing a winter league game here in Cheese League Baseball. Here's Bam Fry, 286 in the tournament. Hey. Strike on the inside part of the plate. One and two. Grounded to West, and there's out number two. Kenna Howell steps in. Playing first base today. He's yet to register a hit for the Aeroplanes. And 0 and 2. And up. And West with a diving stop. Fires. And there's out number three. Four, five, and six, two up now for the Feta Flamers. Now batting the shortstop, number Lana Hogan steps 26. in. Mitchell, less of a pitch selection. 
Four seamer, uh, cutter, and uh, change up. And that one's a base hit up the middle. And the Flamers have base runner here in the bottom of the second. Now back. Balls to the the price. Yet to register nine. a hit so far in the tournament. Oh. So looking for that icebreaker. Mid-range speed, maybe below average speed on the base pass. And two and one now on Price. Fouled away. Series is tied 1-1 between these two teams. And that's base hit up the middle. So two on, nobody out. Cray Cray steps in. 286 so far this tournament with an RBI. Very good speed on the base pass. That's first base, and that's not going to matter because uh, that's a double play. <laughs> that brings up Everly Harris, 429. Runner on third, two outs. Chance here for the Flamers to get a run on the board. Base hit scores that runner. 2 and 1. Strike. Crowd didn't like it. 2 and 2 to Harris. And got her. Swing it through it. See, K Man activated there for Mitchell. It's a good stat. I'm activated. Butters Patrick steps in. He has yet to register a hit this tournament. That one won't out. drop in either. Cray K catches it now batting, the short for out number, number one. And back to the three. top of the order, Trey Mattingly steps in. 0 for 1 today. He said 0 for 3. No, we're not there yet. Popped up behind the plate. Price is there. And the two outs. This game is moving along very quick so far. Jerry Droop, 479 foot jack her first at bat. Looks like two balls. Two and one. And now two and two. Nope. Full count. And nice leaping catch there by Harris for the final out of the inning. Eight, nine, and one do up here in the bottom half of the frame for the home team fed up Lamers. Emery Low, DH today. Follow. Mitchell looking locked in. Whiffer and K Man activated. And got him. Yeah, it's, that's a deadly combo right there when you have Whiffer and K Man activated. It's pretty much lights out. Here's Gertie Carter, number nine hitter. Skies this one. To left field, Fry is there. And that's out number two. Nice little warehouse here in the background too. At Red Rock Ballpark. That reminds me of the warehouse at Camden Yards in uh, Baltimore. Two one on Alfredo West, the leadoff hitter, and puts the ball way inside. Three and one. And now Mitchell's working back. Full count. That one's popped up. Is that bug be out there? No, it's Brown. There's out number three, and this game is cruising right along, folks. Three, four, and five do up. For the Asiago Arrow Plays. The second baseman, number eleven. There's Ash McIntyre. All high. Playing second base today. Inside. Two no. Steve. And two one. Popped up to left field. Carter is there. There's out number one. How about the third baseman, number 53. Del Russell now. Strike. Avalos is more of an accuracy pitcher, not really a uh, velocity or jump pitcher. That's up. But she's hitting her spots today. Three and two on Russell. And that's a ball outside. Again, make me eat my words. Maybe she's not in her spots. <laughs> Here's Jared Bugby. And pop.
popped up off the end of the bat. Carter's there. Boy, that was off the end of the bat, but the ball is just kind of flying out of this ballpark. You can really tell maybe it's the desert air here at Red Rock Ballpark, but uh, yeah, I'd like to see what a night game looks like here. We might have that chance yet. It's Kobe Frown steps in, two outs. Runner on first base here in the top of the fourth. One and two on Frown. And that one gets away from Price behind the plate. Runner advances to second. So now it's two and two on Frown. Runner in scoring position, but he looks at strike number three. And that's how that part of the inning ends. Two, three, and four. To lead it off here for the home team Flamers. Exception of that. Uh, no, no, that's a base hit down into the corner. Should be extra bases. It's going for two. Fry fires and safe. Tapia in there with the leadoff double. And the Beta Flamers are threatening. Hit into right field. They hold the runner at third. And now we got runners in the corners for Hogan. No outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Ball way outside. 95 there in the gun for Mitchell. And infield in, a tagger. And it's a double play. So infield playing in. Good strategy there. Good call by the Arrow Plains manager. That one's hit quite well. It's carrying, but not enough. There's Frown in. that inning so the Flamers leave a runner on third base go to the top of the fifth Bam Fry let's lead it off number 7-8-9 here for the aeroplane Velos has 56 pitches and that's based on the middle for Fry looking pretty comfortable though I'll, in all honesty you know Velos and, uh, and Mitchell are pretty evenly matched here Kenna Howell steps in. Good speed on the base pass. One and one. Oh, show bunt. We have not seen. Oh, no, we saw one bunt here once. And that's a strikeout. I get excited when I see small ball. <laughs> Here's Butters Patrick looking for his icebreaker. Hit steady, pops that one up. Second out. Dramatic Again, I keep wanting to say 0 for 3 is 0 for 2. Don't know why I keep wanting to say 0 for 3. Runner goes. And safe. So Fry with the stolen bag. And there's a strike to Mattingly. And 2 and 2. Velo sets and delivers. Now the full count. And he's walked. So runners on first and second now. Sherry Drew steps in. One for two with a home run and an RBI already today. And look at the speed on the base pass here from the Asiago Aeroplanes. It's exceptional speed. That's up. And just got under that one. Cray Cray is there, puts it away for out number three. So the aeroplanes leave a pair of base runners stranded. And then Carlo Cray Cray will actually lead it off. Still one nothing, folks, here in the bottom of the fifth. Six, seven, and eight do up for the home team Flamers. 2 0. 44 pitches here for Mitchell. She's looking pretty comfortable. And batter is walk, so Craig Cray is on first. Off walk, that brings up Everly Harris, over one so far today. Good speed on the base pass, too. And Harris can be a deadly hitter. One and two is the count. That one's fouled away. And that gets. 
into the dugout or over the dugout or through the dugout. And ball low. And Cray Cray advances. So runner on second now. And I think they're just, yeah, they're just going to walk Harris. Oh, no, that was weird. Howell for the first out. Cray Cray advances to third. That was interesting. I, I think they may have thought that Cray Cray might run there. That was interesting. It's a pretty good base runner, but I wasn't expecting that. Patrick has a pretty darn good arm behind the plate, too. Infield's playing in. McIntyre. The put out, but the run does score. Now it's a tie ball game. And that brings up Gertie Carter. Two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. 2 0. And 3 0. Two Carter. And there's a strike. Mitchell's working back. And now the full count. Tough out. K man, both activated for these players. And that's a base hit into left field. Good at bat, good piece of hitting there. And that brings up Alfredo West, who's 0 for 2 so far today. Pretty good speed on the base pass here for the Flamers. Extra base hit might score that run. Give them the lead. 2-1. And now the 3-1. and Full count. Sends the runner. And he's walked. So two on now, two outs. Saya Tapia steps in for two so far today with a double, and we're going to have a pitching change. Turn up. We've seen turn up quite a bit. Reliever out of the Aeroplanes bullpen. Comes into face Tapia and quickly 0 and 2. Ball outside. Ball way high. Kind of a rise ball almost. And that one's hit quite well. Does it have the distance? No, it does not. Bugby is there for the final out. So a couple runners left on base there for the Flamers. They really threaten. They tie the ball game. We go to the top of the sixth. And here's Ash McIntyre to lead it off. Three, four, and five do up for the aeroplanes. Velo's still out there, still working away. Looking locked in now. And a low ball again, three and one to McIntyre. There's a strike. And walked him. I think we're going to see Avelos get pulled here pretty soon. And yes, right now, actually. And here's Espinosa. Espinosa actually a closer coming in out of the pen. Lefty closer. And that one is grounded. To Harris across the diamond for the sure out at first. Runner Vince is the second, and now that brings up Jared Bugby. Runner on second here, top of the sixth, one out. And Bugby hits that one, and it's a fair ball into the corner. Runner's coming home, and it's an RBI single. The aeroplanes take the two to one lead. Bugby, I actually wasn't sure if that was if that was going to be a home run. I wasn't sure. The ball looks looks like it's just carrying out of the ballpark today. Kobe Frown looks at a strike. Here's two and two. The count, one out, and struck him out. That brings up Bam Fry. One for two today with a single. We have two outs here. Top of the sixth. Runner on first base. And one and one is the count on Fry. One and two now. And a base hit through the right side. I think they brought in uh, Howell steps in now for two. I think they brought in Espinosa because the bullpen. Bullpen for, for the, uh, oh, double steal action. And safe. Bullpen for the Flamers, I think, has been a little uh, used Hello. up. Nope. Three and one now on Howell. Hey. Full count. That's a pop-up. 
but that's going to get into the stands. Over the squelch sign. Three and two. Shattered bat. West for the final out of the inning. And the airplanes get a run here. They lead it two to one. We go to the bottom part of the sixth. Robert to lead it off. Three, four, and five, two up. Hardy is a hit today. Turn up still in the mound. Inside. Oh, that one crossed up. Crossed up Patrick behind the plate. Hit the Howell. She takes it herself. There's out number one. Layla Hogan. Lila Hogan. One and one now is the count on Hogan. Two and one. And that was grounded to McIntyre. Two outs. It's been a pretty darn quick game. Number two, Balsy Price, one for two today. Again, crosses up Patrick. Turn up. Her delivery is uh, very deceiving, you know, especially that movement on that slider, movement on that cutter. And that's a base hit into right center field. So the Flamers have a two out base runner. That brings up Marlo Craig Gray. 0 for 1 with the walk today. Number 46. And another one. Two out of Craig Gray. Two outs, runner on first. Runner on first base is good speed. And now the 3-1 pitch. And she is walked. So Cray Cray is walked. And that will bring up Harris. Two. And Steeler activated out there at second base. He said Patrick has a pretty good arm, though. And that one is hit right at Howell for out number three. And pretty anticlimactic inning. Runners left on base. We've seen that quite a bit so far in this game. Butters Patrick leads it off here. Top of the seventh. Espinosa is still in there. Up to Tapia. Flips the Oh, it's bobbled by Espinosa. What should have been a sure out is bobbled, and Espinosa's getting pulled. That brings in Remy Tiredhead. And runner, oh, what happened? That was the weirdest, some weird stuff happened in this game, folks. I think it was a hit and run. Definitely a hit and run because Patrick doesn't run well there at first at all. Mattingly missed it, swung through it. So one and two now on Mattingly. Now two and two, runner at second base. And he's out. Mattingly got thrown off quite a bit after that weird, that weird, weird swing. That that he just did. Here's Sherry Drew. Yeah. Big home run back in the first inning. That one's popped up. Bobbert is there. Runner thought about going. But uh, yeah, Patrick doesn't run that well now at second, second base. Better not chance Number it. 11. And that brings up Ash McIntyre with two outs here. Runner on second and top of the seven. Tirehead's accuracy is all over the place. Accuracy is down, I should say. They're just throwing the ball all over the place because of that. And Tirehead actually might not last much longer in this game. And yeah, just as I suspected, here's Preston Taverna coming out of the bullpen. Throws the ball in the dirt. Two on, two out. Miguel Russell looks at ball two here in the top of the seven. And three and oh. And walks him. So Taverna comes in, three straight pitches. The center fielder, number and that brings up Jared Bugby with the bases juiced here, top of the seven. Chance for the aeroplanes to blow this game wide apart. 2 0 oh now. And there's a strike from Taverna. Might actually be the first strike he's thrown so far. 3 and 1 now. And he walks a run in. 
So it's a three to one ball game. Cody Brown steps in now, 0 for 3. And Taverna's accuracy is way down. Strike to Frown. At this point, just there's a strike. One and two now. Way outside, two and two. And got him. Frown is very upset with himself. Left the bases loaded, but nonetheless, the airplanes get a run. They lead it three to one. As we go to the bottom of the seventh here, and we're gonna have Duarte come in. Closer here for the aeroplane. Facing off is gets Emery low and eight, nine, and one, and low sneaks a base hit through the right side. So the Flamers lead off base runner. That brings up Gary Carter. One for two today with a single. Lefty specialist is activated here. Duarte. Oh, and two. And got her. Brings up Alfredo West, top of the order, 0 for 2 today. With a runner on first, one out here in the bottom of the seven. And that one's popped up. Looks like Patrick is going to get there, take it himself. And there's out number two. The Flamers are down to their final out, folks. That brings up Asaya Tapia. He could change the outcome of this game, though. At least tied up with one swing of the bat. We've seen him hit some jacks before. Two and one. And now ball way outside. Might actually be thrown around him. Three and one. Full count. And ball way inside. Now there's runners on first and second. Rose Bobber, who's one for three today. Duarte looking to just That's get high. this final out here and close out this game. There's two balls way high. Outside. There's a ball outside, 3-0 to Bobber. And four straight balls. Bobber is walked. Now that brings up Hogan. One for three with a single Number today. Bases loaded here in the bottom of the seventh. Damn. There's a strike from Duarte. Inside, his accuracy is down. Ball outside, good take there by Hogan. And ooh, a little high and inside action, two and two. And got her. Strikeout, end of the game. Asiago Aeroplanes win. Wow, look at that. That was an interesting ball game for, <laughs> for these two teams. Take a look at the uh, lines here. Three, five, and zero oh for the Asiago Aeroplanes. One, seven, and one for the Feta Flamers. Taking a look here at the offense. Uh, big hits coming from, of course, Drew with that 379 or 479 foot jack. Uh, that was a, a monster home run here over the batter's eye. Um, we also have. Fry with a good game, two for three, and then hits throughout from uh, McIntyre and Bugby as well. On the Flamer side, uh, so you mentioned six strikeouts and six walks on the aeroplane side. On the Flamer side, uh, two for three was Price, a good game, and then Spatter hits throughout from Tapia, Bobber, Hogan, Lowe, Carter. Big RBIs, of course, coming from Lowe. Um, and then five walks and four strikeouts on the Flamer side. Now I mentioned that it was kind of it, kind of an odd game. Um, let me take a look at the pitching side of things. Turn up with the win, first win of the tournament. Sa uh, Duarte with the save for save the tournament, and Avelos the loss. Now what's odd about this? You see, I mean the Flamers used a lot of pitchers, but honestly it's not out of the ordinary for a regular cheese league game. I feel like these teams have used a bunch of pitchers. Um, maybe the, the order of pitchers, the way they came in, was, was kind of interesting for the Flamer side. Uh, but Mitchell pitched quite well. You see four and two-thirds innings, uh, five hits, one earned run, two walks, two strikeouts. And again, Avalos pitched quite well, too. Five innings pitched, three hits, two earned runs, uh, 
three walks, three strikeouts, and they give up that home run. They need a pretty evenly matched game um, and a low scoring game, too, for these two teams. So, break it down here for you. Game number one, it was 8 6, the arrow plane. Game number two uh, with these teams, it was 7 6, the Flamers won. And now, here in game number three, the Aeroplanes win 3 to 1. So, low scoring game. Um, yeah, not a lot of home runs either. Different ballpark, maybe that had uh, something to do with it. We'll say Big Sky Ballpark does have short porch and left field, and um, it's probably a more hitter friendly ballpark, maybe. Um, uh, Red Rock Park here is actually kind of a big ballpark. Let's take a look at the number three players here, top three players. Jared Bugby, one for three, two RBIs, and a stolen bag. Sherry Drew, one for four. Homer, an RBI, and a run. And Talia Mitchell, like I said, four two-thirds innings pitch, five hits, one earned run, and only two walks allowed. So uh, as a C-rated uh, starting pitcher, Talia Mitchell pitched quite well against this, uh, what could, what can be a formidable um, Lamers lineup. So that is it for game number three against these teams, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you did like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. We appreciate the love and support here on YouTube. And uh, be sure to check out all the other fun videos that we have up here on YouTube, like the whole entire 2020 Cheese League baseball season. Follow us on Twitter, at Geek underscore Cheese. That's where you're going to find all of your schedule announcements for the Winter League tournament. And uh, be sure to check out our second channel at twitch.tv slash geekcheese. We're up there sometimes, but we do some fun stuff. Uh, okay. All right, that's it for me right now, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Aeroplanes win. Take care. Bye.